Hi everyone, it's Nicole and welcome to our finishing tutorial for the more chocolate bunnies sal. I am going to be finishing my piece on this plentiful paddle or plentiful pocket paddle by Chantal of 141 Design. So here are the pieces you get when you open up your package. It is a background paddle and you can see that it's got the etching lines to show you where to line up the little, uh, I call them risers, maybe that's what they're called, maybe it isn't, I'm not sure. And then you can place the pocket piece on the front. So what we're basically doing is building a little pocket that makes it very easy to stick in different greenery, florals, picks, all that kind of stuff to decorate your paddle. If you were wanting to swap this out for different seasons or different occasions, it makes it really easy. You could put magnets on the back of your pocket piece and then your stitching, and you can simply swap out the piece on the front of your paddle with the things you stick inside. And I would highly recommend that if you have other pieces that you want to swap out. I am going to attach mine as I'm gonna show you in the video so that it's permanent. Um, but I definitely could see doing this for other pieces, just depending on the size. I am using some tight bond glue to attach the first layer of the risers. Now you could make this you can use both as I'm going to do, or you could just use one if you want a little bit shallower pocket. It's not going to be super deep anyway. And the tight bond glue, this is a tip I learned from Chantal. They are fantastic. Now, I, I do want to mention, um, I put the risers on, but if I had been smart, <laughs> I would have uh, stained my piece first. I'm not gonna put the front pocket on quite yet. Tight bond glue is going to glue very fast. It is going to be very secure. I get mine at Lowe's, so you're going to want to check a place like Lowe's or Home Depot or just some sort of wood glue that will allow you to attach and build your pieces. And this is going to go for anything that you get from Chantal. She recommends this glue and I find it fantastic. At the beginning, when you saw me piercing the top, my glue, I haven't used it for a little bit and I just needed to kind of unplug it. So let's go ahead and make sure we get our glue on the second layer and I'm going to start attaching the next set of risers. And some of the glue squishes out and I am going to be real technical and I just take my finger and swipe that along the edge. <laughs> uh, just cleaning that up. So just, and probably a wet rag would have been smart here to um, clean my fingers, but I did not have one handy. So I'll just wash here in a minute. And then again, I just want to swipe down both the outside and even the inside, even though that isn't really going to be very visible, of the riser, just making it nice and clean. Now I am going to speed up parts of the video to save us time because it is time consuming to finish your piece, not as time consuming as stitching it, um, but we also don't want to sit here all night long waiting literally for paint to dry. Okay, this is actually um, the blue thing that I'm wiping my finger on. It's a puppy pad. I have a new puppy, if you didn't know. And so I have some puppy pads and I'm actually not using them anymore. And so uh, this is a good use for it because I need something that liquid won't go through to protect my work surface. Now, I know I'm adding glue here and I know I told you I wasn't going to add the front pocket but it's about this point that I realize, oh my gosh, I should stain this first. So let's just swipe up the glue. I'm just gonna clean it up like this. I'm not staining the risers, so it's totally fine. It'll, it'll all work out. I'm just gonna wipe that excess glue off. Now, if you are going to stain with actual stain or, or really any type of inking product, I would recommend some rubber gl gloves or like medical grade gloves, which you see here. Um, 
I just have these for when I have to clean things that I don't want to touch with my hands or don't want to touch cleaner to my hands. Um, I'm going to use the puppy pad to uh, protect my work surface. You could use all kinds of different things for this. And I am going to stain the front and the back of my panel with some of this Minwax Special Walnut. It's my favorite color. Um, I thought I could get the can off with this, but I cannot. I am going to have to find something else to open up my can. I think I ended up just using my scissors. I usually use a screwdriver, and of course I did not bring that in. So I'm just gonna use my scissors here to open up my can very, very carefully. I usually do this outside. Please use it in a well-ventilated area. I did open all the windows and turn the fan on. Uh, I just used a rag to swipe it on. I'm looking for a base coat. My paddle is going to be mostly white, but I want it to look stained underneath. So I am going to stain the front and the back of my paddle. And I do mention this, or I, I think I mentioned this in my floss tube video, but it's a little naughty here on the back. Most of the pieces you get from Chantal, you get pieces that don't have that. I got the prototype, so kind of keep that in mind. Uh, none of that will be seen. Obviously the back of the panel, no one's gonna see that. And then the inside of the pocket, you're not gonna see that as well. So I am literally swiping on my stain with just old rags. Um, you can use a paintbrush and then rub it in with a rag whatever you want to do. I've let it completely dry and then I did glue the pocket onto the front with that tight bond glue. Now here is the true magic. We are going to do some resist with Vaseline or petroleum jelly. I have the generic kind and I am applying it with my finger. If you do not like to apply it with your finger, uh, use a paintbrush but I'm gonna rub it along the edges where it would naturally wear. My goal with this was to make it, what, what's gonna happen, I guess is what I wanna say, is it's going to be a white paddle that is chippy looking and showing the stain underneath. So the stain is really gonna get covered up for the most part, but I do want these big, chippy areas to show and this is something you can do if you don't have a sander or you don't want to sand because it's messy and you know usually you need to be wearing a mask or whatever to not breathe in the particles all of that good stuff this is another option it's very fun it's very easy and i would recommend being quite liberal with your application because we're going to be wiping it away. Basically, it's going to resist the paint when I go to paint this. Now, I will tell you I did not videotape the actual painting. We are going to simply, I'm taking this outside into a, a box and I am going to use some white chalk paint. Um, I think I used Krylon, I think. I'll show you the can here in a minute to paint this. So I am going to do about two coats of paint for the front and the back. That is going to require dry time. I will tell you, I allowed mine to dry an hour between each coat. So it does take some time. Um, it's not going to be super, super speedy. <laughs> uh, here is one of the applications. You can see where the Vaseline is. It's very bubbly looking and kind of you know, it doesn't look that great, but it will when we're done. So I have allowed my paint to completely dry and I have another old rag here. This one is damp. I just wet it with water and then I squeezed all the water out. So it's just barely damp. And I'm simply going where I applied the Vaseline and I'm starting to wipe it away. And you're gonna want to like shake the rag out. I would normally do this outside uh, and get rid of all those little paint pieces but it's starting to look nice and chippy. It, I wanted it to look like something you could pre-buy um, at the store that comes, you know, all, already all decorated or whatever, but I wanted to create the same look for myself. And I have to say, I want to do this to everything now. It's very fun, it's very satisfying, and it gives you a completely different look than sanding. And not everyone has a sander or wants to use a hand sander. Um, sometimes that, you know, is a little bit harder. This literally is one of the easiest things I've ever done. So I'm hoping it inspires you to try it, if not for this project, for something else. 
I did take my time there. I need to work my way all the way around the paddle and the pocket. So you're going to see me kind of clean up, come back, and then I, I will clean up my work surface. And I just clean it up with a little water. And I love that it's very imperfect. And I love that there's just these different little areas all over. So I am going to keep rubbing all of it away. I just want to make sure I remove all the Vaseline. Now the next big drying time is I want to take a clear top coat and I just have a Krylon top coat that I'm going to use. You could also, um, you could use any kind of finishing you want to use here. Uh, I will link down below what I am using. It's a, a matte clear coat for chalk paint same brand Krylon and I again will spray the front let that dry an hour spray the back let it dry an hour and then I did spray the front again I gave it a couple of coats I just like it to be nice and protected to have that clear coat on top um, here I'm gonna check the sides of my board make sure I'm getting rid of all the Vaseline I'm just I really really worked to make sure that I got it all cleaned up before I took it and sprayed it so yes there is quite a lot of dry time involved anytime you're using paint and um it's winter <laughs> it's cold still cold where i am it was only like in the 40s the days i did this high 40s if this was summertime you could you know in between coats it's going to be a lot quicker um, depending where you are depending on humidity but give yourself plenty of time you know, to finish it, I would probably suggest the weekend start in the morning uh, and then or do it over a couple nights, even whatever you need to do. The rest of the finishing goes super fast, but I do love having a fantastic base to start with. And I did leave this in. I, I sped it up a little bit, but I left it in just to show you kind of my process for working through this and uh, getting the board ready to put our beautiful piece on. Oh, and I guess I think I forgot to spray paint the back. So I actually did that last, um, but kind of ignore that. <laughs> in the in the floss tube video, I, I will show the front and the back of this. I learned my lesson. I did not paint the back of the old fashioned backer board, and I wish I had, because if you set it anywhere where you can see the back of it, it's unfinished. So I will likely kind of pull that apart and spray paint it before next holiday season. So I did go ahead and paint the back of this now, just depending on where you want to place it. But if you're going to hang it on the wall or you want to put it, you know, on a mantle or something, you should be good. Okay, so here is my pocket, my cross stitch, my fabric. I am putting some measurements up on the screen and I'm going to leave them there for a minute. And the reason is I really want to reiterate this because I measured wrong during this part of the video, but I do want to show the steps. So I've got my tape measure out and I am measuring my actual stitched piece. So my, my stitching backer, the sticky board and the batting, I am going to trim to five and a half by six and a half. And um, I'm going to write those down as I'm working but it was a work in progress and if you stitched on 32 count fabric yours is probably going to be somewhat similar if you stitched on 14 you are going to have to adjust because your stitch will be slightly bigger that is okay you may have a little bit uh narrower margin i'm gonna have a half an inch margin on mine you might not you might only have a quarter of an inch whatever you need to do it's going to look a little bit different for you, but I wanted to share my process for this. So what I ended up coming up with is my stitch backer. So sticky board and batting five and a half by six and a half. My fabric backer is an inch bigger, six and a half by seven and a half. The pocket measures seven and a half by eight and a half. So you can kind of see here the different sizes. I don't have a, a 14 stitch in front of me, but I would imagine that the backers are going to be more like, um, obviously the pocket measurement is not gonna change, but maybe the fabric backer will be more like 
seven by eight. I don't know because I don't have one. Uh, if that is one that gets chosen for me to finish, uh, you, I will get to do that for sure. Now I actually did not trim down. I had scraps of sticky board. I will link some sticky board down below. And I've gotten smart. I actually saw Kathy do this in one of, from Hands On Design do this in one of her videos. She uses a uh, blade <laughs> to cut her, her sticky board. And I'm like, why have I been trying to mess around with a paper cutter or a rotary cutter because it just does not work good. I do need a new blade for my my um, straight edge there, but it still worked great. And I really like to test. Um, honestly, it was okay that I started with my sticky board bigger than what I ended up needing. I would rather that than it be too small. So, if you have to adjust as you're working, it's okay. And I left a lot of that in because I feel like it's important to share that journey as you're creating. And I've left the measurements up because if you stitched on 32 count, I hope this helps you. And if I finish a 14 count design for someone, then I will definitely share that in the Facebook group. So after I, cut down my sticky board and again this is slightly the wrong size but this is still the right steps I cut two layers of batting it's going to depend on your batting I use warm and white these are scraps left over from quilts I've made and it's rather thin so I like two layers if you have a thicker batting you probably only need one and then the sticky board has one side that's sticky and the other is not and so I just layer on one layer of my batting. The other one's just gonna sit on top and then my stitch will go on top of that. I don't really want my stitch touching the sticky board. That's just my personal preference. I do have a lot of excess fabric, so I didn't even measure this. I just took my rotary cutter and trimmed up some of that extra fabric. And um, the next thing I want to note is if you want to attach your stitch to your sticky board like I did in Old Fashioned with the sticky dots and the sticky tape, please check out that video and it will be linked down in the description below. I am going to share a different way today. I am going to lace my piece. My lacing is pretty, I don't want to say loose, but it's, I'm not a professional lacer it is good enough for my finish. I am not really looking for perfection in my finish. I am looking for something that I'm proud to display. It does take a little bit longer than using a sticky dot or sti sticky tape. And before I ever start lacing, I do use some of these clips to kind of hold my stitch in place. I'm double checking it. I don't want to start lacing it until I am for sure. And Really, it is about this point that I realize that I have not measured correctly. There is a lot of extra space on the sides. I do need to fix that and trim it down, which I will do. So before I do that, I'm actually going to go ahead and trim down another piece of sticky board to six and a half by seven and a half, cut some fabric a little bit bigger, and I am going to use the sticky board and the sticky dots and sticky tape to attach my fabric. I am using a gingham fabric from Lori Holt. Um, as long as I can find it in stock, I believe these are still in stock. They're st still fairly new and her fabrics do stay in stock a little bit longer. It is why I chose one of hers. I mean, I had it already, but I tried to pick something that, that was uh, you guys might be able to get if you like the look of it. And I did pick orange. I liked how it pulled it out. I also like how the white backer to me, um, I did stitch on the called for Aspen Weeks Dye Works linen and it's a little dark. Um, but I think the white backer and then the pops of orange lighten up my stitch a lot. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm very, very happy with how it turned out. So this is the fabric. I have got my wool pressing mat and actually before I iron it, I'm actually just going to take my rotary cutter and cut around it, maybe about a half inch. I did not even measure. This is me. It does not matter that much. So I'm just going to fold up all the extras so I can save it for another project. 
And now I'm going to grab my wool pressing mat and we're going to press this because I don't want any funny wrinkles in my, my finish backer. Then I'm going to peel off that backing and the sticky board is so sticky and I am going to then kind of follow, actually it's better if I take the board to the fabric so I can see the lines in the gingham. And I'm gonna try, I don't want it to be super wonky. And then I'm gonna smooth it on the front before flipping it over and we are going to apply a sticky dot in all four corners, fold in the corners and secure them. I'm using the smaller dots. And then we will place the sticky tape along the sides and fold the fabric over. If you feel more comfortable with a hot glue gun at this point, you can definitely do that. I kept my hot glue gun for just a couple of steps, which you'll see near the end of the video. I really love the sticky dots because it does allow you a little bit more give and a little bit more freedom that if you've got to pull something up, if you don't get your corner kind of nice and mitered like you want to and is tight, you can adjust. You can pull it away from the sticky uh, tape and redo it, and I did. I wanted my corners to be super nice and crisp, and so I will be adjusting those as needed. I'm gonna do the two long sides first. I usually, you know, I just pick the opposite sides and do two of those, and then I'll do the other two. So again, pressing it down, and then I'm using something sharp. I just have this piercing tool from paper crafting, but whatever you have, even the tip of scissors will work. And I'm gonna pull away that away and I try to keep my hands out of it as much as possible to not get the oils in. And then I'm gonna smooth it into place and then we'll do the other side. And I'm just gonna kind of pull that in and then I just want to smooth that around, wrap it around. And then let's do the other two sides. I'm hoping that by sharing these video tutorials, it takes some of the scariness out of finishing things yourself. Um, it, it can be really rewarding. And my best advice is to take your time. So here's that corner I don't like. See how it's a little bit funny? I want that to be nice and pointy. So I'm gonna flip it over and double check. And then with the tape, what you couldn't do with glue is I can pull it up and I can tighten up those corners. That looks good. I like it. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay. And again, I'm pulling that up and just kind of trying to tighten up my corners. Oh, I love it. Let's see what it looks like on the board. I love how springy that feels to me. And then when you put the stitch on it, look how the colors just pop. I am very, very happy with that. Yep, so here is where I realized I have not gauged uh, my size. I need to cut about a quarter of an inch off one long side, that's it. And it has, yes, it already has the batting, but I'm gonna use a combination of my, my razor blade there and my rotary cutter or my box cutter pardon me and my rotary cutter and that's fine okay i'm gonna wrap it around double check yes i like that's a little bit closer uh size and scale wise everything is matching up and so now i am going to lace and you want to use something stronger than embroidery floss i actually don't have any strong like thread in my stash um, I only have like quilting thread and embroidery floss of some sort, but I have lots and lots of crochet thread because I've used it for different craft projects or sewing buttons on lots of things. It's nice and strong. I didn't have to go to the store and buy anything. I'm not gonna have to worry about it tearing. And I am going to start lacing. Now, it is kind of best to start with a long piece of thread, but it also can be kind of difficult as you can see. I am keeping my stitches pretty close together and I am gonna work on the long sides first and I am simply making a little, take like taking a little bite out of each side 
and tightening it as I'm going. You're lacing, uh, just like you would lace up a shoe, basically. And I'm gonna go back and forth all the way down. And I do have to reload my needle quite often. This is not a cross stitch needle. This is just a basic craft needle. Um, it's what I use for lots of different things that I have to craft if I have to sew buttons onto something, different things like that. Um, I'm gonna double check. The great thing about this is we're not securing the piece. Um, if you ever wanted to change it, if you wanted to turn this into a pillow, if you wanna frame it into a frame, you could do that. There are a lot of different things you can do with your finish here. I'm just gonna simply lace it. I like the way it looks a lot. Uh, it's something, it's a skill that I am wanting to improve upon for the finishes that I wanna do myself. Um, I would still have a lot of things professionally finished. And I totally got a knot that I can't get out and I ended up having to trim this down. That is the problem with super long string. And then I think that pulled through. Oh, it did. I think I must have put a little hole in my linen. Luckily it's on the back. Anyway, we're gonna continue to lace all the way down. When we have this first side finished, I am going to flip it over. I am going to look at my piece because our piece can still be moved and adjusted. You can smooth out the sides. Um, there's a lot. Um, again, not professional lacing. They're going to tighten things a lot more, um, you know, all that good stuff. This is, this is what I call lacing for your personal finishing. <laughs> Uh, but I do very much love how it, how it ends up looking. And my philosophy is you take a lot of time, a lot of hours to stitch a project. Finishing, while it's not usually super quick and easy, take your time. Um, I, it can be easy. I shouldn't say it's hard. Don't don't rush through the finish, I guess is what I'm saying. Put the same love and care that you put into stitching your piece into the finishing. This total, without the painting, obviously, took me about an hour and a half. That's not really all that long in the big scheme of things. When I sew a chenille trim onto a, a pillow finish, it generally takes about the same amount of time. And I have the benefit of I have been thinking about the finish for a while. And here I'm folding down the other sides. I'm gonna just use my clips. I like my clips a lot because it allows me to kind of, you can see I'm pushing my linen, I'm working my fabric, and we're gonna lace the other direction. Feel free to fast forward if you want to finish yours a different way. And again, I will link to my old fashioned sal finish. If you want to finish this with the same sticky tape and sticky dots that I just showed for the fabric layer, you can do that absolutely. Uh, it would be a wonderful finish. My goal with my tutorials is I'm trying to share some different ideas. Uh, there is not one that is right, wrong, better, any of those things. It's just different options and what you prefer for finishing. I will still finish things with sticky tape and sticky dots. I just really, as I said, want to share multiple ideas and hopefully just encourage you guys to try different things as well. So just lacing all of the things. Now, um, where the fabric folds over, you just want to make sure that it stays to the back. You can stitch. I am going to stitch down the corners just a little bit to secure them on a couple of those. And, you know, I am having to reload quite often. I just found I was getting super frustrated because my long strand kept tangling and I kept getting knots. We're just gonna go ahead and start here from this side and then we'll work our way to the middle. I would love to know in the comments if you have tried lacing for either a framed piece or a finish before. 
I was very inspired by Kathy of Hands On Design. Um, I've seen her do this in a couple of videos. I would love to take a class and learn learn <laughs> learn how to probably do it correctly. <laughs> but uh, I, you know, I've seen it done a few times and thought, why not? Let's give it. I've done it for a couple of things already, so it wasn't completely new to me. <laughs> but uh, this was probably one of the bigger pieces I've done. Oh, it looks good. I do need to lace the center. We we don't want to leave that. It could get kind of funny. But I'm not going to need too big of a piece. And it's about this point that I'm done lacing. Um, I want to be done. <laughs> I'm not done, but I do want to be done. And I have to say, this crochet thread, and I get mine at Hobby Lobby. I've, I have it in every color pretty much, and I've had it forever. Works great for this because it's nice and strong. All right. I'm liking it. Now, I do see a couple corners that I just want to secure down. I don't want that fabric coming out, so I am going to just kind of stitch that down. A little whip stitch there in the corner, and I'm actually just gonna pull it to the opposite corner and do a little whippy stitch thing over here. And I call it a whippy stitch thing because it truly is a whippy stitch thing. It is not really a whip stitch. It is just a, it's a Nicole tacking down the corner. No one's gonna see it stitch. All right, I could do the opposite corners. I did not. Oh my goodness, look at the corners. This is something that I think with lacing you get. The corners look good, really good. I'm very happy with them. Okay, I'm gonna use Chantal's corner gauges. This is the half inch corner gauge and it is really gonna help line it up. I love these, an absolutely awesome product. I have to get the circles next for doing circle finishes. So. I am going to attach my stitch to the fabric with the sticky tape. And this was a choice because if I need to pull it off at some point, I can. Uh, much easier than hot glue, but if you don't, if it doesn't matter to you, use hot glue. Hot glue is great. I love hot glue. There is no hate or shade in my finishing game here. Uh, same as stitching, stitch on whatever fabric you like. There is no hate here. I'm just going to peel off my backing. Maybe it does not want to come up off the fabric very much. I'm just trying to separate the backing from the tape. Something sharp definitely helps here. And I did use quite a lot because I want it to stay put. Okay, we're gonna grab our fabric backer and we are going to use our corner gauge just to help line it up. I've already pre-measured, but it's just gonna help with placement. I'm gonna butt it up there in the corner and I'm gonna pop my backer down. I'm gonna double check the bottom, whoops. Yep, that's nice and flush. Oh, I'm very happy with this. I'm gonna press it down in place and it is nice and secure and here's what it's gonna look like on the paddle, oh my goodness. Now, we definitely need something to decorate. I didn't use rickrack this time. If you like using rickrack and you wanna use the sticky tape to attach it, again, please check out my old fashioned finishing video, especially if you didn't do that, the old fashioned finishing uh, for another idea for adding a really pretty decorative border. I think rickrack would look so cute here. The, the uh, little, um, pick, pardon me, that I'm sharing here is from Hobby Lobby. It's got some carrots and some flowers on it. It was my favorite. I went back to Hobby Lobby this last week to see if they had any more. They do not. I did pick up enough for the finishing for other people early on. The egg pick is from Michael's. I do not know if it's still available or not, um, but I just want to mention where you can find some of these things. And there are other picks out there. I picked up a lot of different ones. I ended up choosing these carrots, uh, the egg pick, and then the little florals. I just think they soften it. They actually come in a, a bundle and I'm going, only going to use a couple here 
for this. And I do want to mention, anything you see me at, use on my finish, I have enough to do the finishes for the giveaway winners. And obviously I'll be talking to whoever wins if they want things changed or adjusted. So I am placing everything in the pocket and this is the beauty of the pocket. If you remember the old fashioned Sal, I made risers out of leftover sticky board strips so that I could tuck stuff behind and it could be nice and flush. If you're a card maker, same thing that you get with foam tape. Well, a pocket takes that step out. It makes it so easy because you can just stick different greenery, picks, all that good stuff in there for your finish and you can switch it out. Uh, maybe you wanna put Christmas stuff in here. Maybe you want fall pumpkins, leaves, um, if you have a St. Patty's Day finish, how cute would that be to put some St. Patty's things in there? Whatever you want and whatever matches your finish. Okay, so I'm using some Aileen's glue and I've got some orange and white cording and that is what I'm using to finish my piece. I did make my own cording from orange and white DMC floss. No, I did not record it. If you want to see how to make cording, I would recommend Ivana Pfeiffer tutorial. She has two different ones on her channel. I am going to link down in the description to the exact video I watched. And I will tell you, when she said how to measure your piece to figure out how much cording you need, and I did, and I started making the cording, I thought for sure that she was lying, it was not gonna be enough. And what do you know, and I did, I always, I always err on the side of caution. I made mine long. Uh, it was definitely long enough. I will tell you my one big error, and I did not want to pull everything apart. I wish I would have connected my cording up at the top where it will be hidden by the bow. I didn't. I think it's still okay, but I do want to mention that. Okay, so I think I want to use this really pretty, ribbon I've had from Stampin' Up forever. To me, it just complements the uh, linen I used perfectly. Again, just whatever color you want to use. The Aileen's glue dries really quick. So I'm going to actually snip mine and I am piecing it together down here at the bottom. I'm just gonna add a little glue and tuck that down and in. I'm actually gonna use the tip of something sharp, my scissors or even that little piercing tool to fix that. I'm super happy with my cording. I love how it ended up turning out. I wanna make cording in all the colors. I will tell you I did, a, I, did a, um, I made some cording out of different floss first. That's what I wanna say, just to give it a try. Okay, ribbon. I played around with ribbon a lot. I wanted to use the orange. I, ended up not loving how the orange turned out. So we are going to just use the uh, natural color only. And what I find works best is to make a couple loops and attach it to the back. So I'm gonna glue mine. You could use the Aileen's, I'm gonna use hot glue. I've got my hot glue out, I'm ready for the hot glue section. And I'm making loops. And you might remember this from the old fashioned Sal because I did something very similar. So this is gonna be a single color bow and it's going to have two loops and then the beautiful notched edges or ends, not edges. And I'm gonna layer those on top of each other and then we're gonna layer them on the final piece and I am going to finish my board and my, my design with that covered button. Very early on before the cell started, I stitched a button I was trying the sulky floss and I just stitched it out of the, a piece of the linen. And so uh, I wanna use it as the finish. I love the covered buttons for finishes. I think they're the perfect accent and it's going to be a nice, simple little way to finish the design and customize it. I am using that same crochet thread to just attach my ribbon together. This is, the way, and I did this for the old fashioned finishing as well, kind of stitched up one side and down the other, avoiding the hot glue. And then I wrap it around the remaining crochet thread or floss or whatever you're using, I wrap it around the center. 
This crochet thread, I wish I would have thought of it before. It's nice and strong. I love it. It's working great. So I am just basically gathering up my bow. And if you wanted to cover this with another little piece of your ribbon, you could. I'm not going to because I'm going to cover the center with my button. And I'm actually going to knot this at this point. And then we will go ahead and pop the button in place. Look how cute this bow is. If you put, if you covered the little string there in the center with a wrap around another little piece of ribbon and hot glue it, it'd be super cute just like that. This is my faux way of making ribbon. When I want the tails to stick out to the side and not down, and that way it doesn't cover up any of the stitch. My whole goal here is to have a little decorative something that doesn't cover up any of the cute chocolate bunnies. All right, let's move that stuff out of the way. Now, I want to sew my button in place a little bit. I want it sewn in place enough that it's attached, but then I am gonna hot glue it down to the center of the bow. I'll show you what I mean. So I am gonna come up from the back of my bow, just kind of through that center, work the, and this is why a nice strong needle comes in handy. Go through that shank in the button, and then I'm gonna go back down through the back. And you can go through it once or twice if you want to. I think in the past I've gone through it more than once. I think I end up going through this one twice. It is not going to secure it that super great. I don't want mine I don't want mine moving around. If you are fine with it like that, that's great. I am going to hot glue mine and secure it like for real secure. <laughs> Where it's not going to move. I want that carrot straight up and down. I don't want it funny. And so let's just knot this again. I am hot gluing this right to my backer board, so I'm not gonna worry at all about how it looks on the back. Oh, I love it. Let's go ahead and hot glue now. I'm just gonna put a little hot glue underneath there, and then I'm gonna work to straighten and fluff my bow. Make sure everything is looking good. Press that down into the bow, but don't put it on your stitch piece. And then let's hot glue this board onto our paddle, our pocket, our plentiful pocket. Okay, and we're gonna secure it just like that. I love the chippiness of the backer. Oh, I'm just loving it so much. And then we're gonna hot glue our bow on. And I want to make sure, I don't think I got that centered. Oh, let's just, before that glue dries, yeah, scoot that over just a little bit. There we go. And remember, none of the picks in my pocket are actually secured. If you wanted to, you could totally hot glue them at this point, but you don't have to. That is it, you guys. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. I am just putting a little bit of Aileen's glue on the edge, frayed edges of my ribbon. I don't want it to fray too bad. Hopefully that will help it from not fraying too much, but that is it. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Thank you for joining me for the More Chocolate Bunnies Sal. If you have any questions at all, please drop them down in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them. And I will see you guys all in the next uh, stitch along. We'll probably be planning for something around summertime. Thanks guys, and we'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube stitching or quilting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.